We have a really high quality selection of weather vanes this year, all sorts of different forms. My favorite weather vane in the sale this year is lot number 11. This was found in New Jersey from a real famous bicycle collection that we are selling in April, and the guy had this in his collection. Um, it's the best horse and sulky weather vane we've ever sold, and it's in wonderful patina, and I hope it exceeds $10,000. We have some really nice items from the Pauling New York house um, that we did for this year's sale. One of my favorite weather vanes in the auction from this estate is this Jewel Horse weather vane. It's the only one I've had and it's in wonderful verdigris original patina. Just a really exceptional form with just a great surface. We're selling an exceptional collection of windmill weights this year and we have a couple rare ones which we really haven't sold many of. One is the squirrel. I think I've only had one squirrel, and in this sale we actually have two squirrels. And another unusual example is the horseshoe. I think that's the only horseshoe we have um, that I've sold, and we actually have two of them in this sale. This is an original Jean-Michel Bosquiat, New York, 1960 to 1988. It's an oil stick and pencil on paper. This piece came from an unknown portfolio from a dear customer of ours, whose deceased husband got it in the 1980s. This is the third one of these that we've sold. And if you look at it, it's really neat because underneath is all the different crowns. And apparently he, if he liked people, he would put crowns in the painting. I won't say the title as you can read it, but I think it's a really rare piece. Last year we got almost $20,000 for one. And our estimate, I believe it's conservative on this, at eight to $10,000. This is a Keith Herring dated 86, and it's on clear plexiglass, as you can see. We use the white background so you can make out the detail. Uh, this again was from the same source as the Basquiat. It was a, uh, the guy was a, a lawyer, and he worked with these artists, and he got some art during the period. So we're lucky to get these things in our little gallery up here in Copake. Very happy, and these were well received last year. Both the Basquiat and the Herring last year, we were very happy with the results. This is felt pen on plexiglass, and it carries an estimate of five to seven thousand. One of my favorite objects in the sale came from a Connecticut estate, and it's this folk art rocking chair attributed to the New York state maker Moses Ogden, whose dates were 1844 to 1919. And what makes it specifically in Ogden, I believe, is these carved heads at the top. If you look at his folk art, they all seem to have this type of folk art carving. And it's just a wonderful piece, an original surface with these really eccentric duck heads, original brown paint, super surface. Um, I'm hoping this brings five to seven thousand. I've never had um, such a nice piece of folk art in quite a while. Lot number 52, we have a wonderful pair of folk art portraits of a man and a woman from the Pauling, New York estate selling unreserved. Uh, we believe these to be William Matthew Pryor or Hamblin Pryor. Um, wonderful pair of portraits, with very little restoration. Uh, I blacklit them yesterday and they have just a tiny bit of touch-ups, but no touch-ups in the face or the hands. Just really nice condition, probably one of the best pair of portraits we've sold in years among a really wonderful selection of portraits in the auction. Lot 84, we have a polychrome painted wooden eagle sculpture that's 47 inches in height. It's attributed to James Elgington in Ohio. This piece came out of a, col a collector in Connecticut's estate, and it's all hand carved polychrome painted wood. Just a really neat folk art example. Very well done, wonderful paint surface. One of my favorite pieces of folk art in the auction. Lot 48 is a beautiful early 19th century corner covered in outstanding original paint. This is from the Pauling, New York estate, and this is one of my father's favorite pieces. Everything from that estate is generally untouched and really sought after items that were very specifically purchased. Lot 30 is a wonderful squirrel weather vane that was found in Columbia County, New York. This piece was actually selected by the Bennington Museum in Bennington, Vermont for its Bennington Collects exhibition that was in March 2012. This is also featured in an Austin Miller catalog, a well-known antique dealer. It came out of a private collection across the river 
and um, it's the first time it's being offered in years. It's a really nice example, wonderful patina. Really of note, which is neat, is the eye. It has a little glass marble eye, and it's just a really neat example. Lot number 12 is a Louis Vuitton steamer trunk. This piece was owned by Charles Minot Jr., a television and film producer. His dad was Charles Minot Armory of Boston, and his mother was Gladys Munn Armory, who later married Herbert Tony Pulitzer. Um, we expect this to bring between seven and 8000 Here we're looking at a really wonderful contemporary colonial style chandelier from the Pauling estate among a selection of chandeliers that we're selling in the sale. And against the wall behind me is a selection of really interesting objects, just kind of highlighting some of the types of things that are in the sale. You see here three beautiful barber poles, one of which is almost as tall as me, um, which is really hard to be. And here we have an exceptional pair of 19th century portraits of sisters from the Pauling New York estate to sell unreserved. We also have here a nice trade sign. We have some really wonderful trade signs in the auction from the Pauling estate, all to sell unreserved. Behind me is a showcase full of wonderful 19th century watercolor portraits of children and families and individuals. Right here is a beautiful child with a whip and a tartan dress. It's probably the best selection of watercolors that we have ever sold. These are all from the Pauling New York estate. The, the collectors had a wonderful eye for neat objects. Lot number 15 is a wonderful portrait of a little girl, 19th century, by William Matthew Pryor. This came out of a Sotheby's sale in the early 90s and has remained in the collector's hands since. It's a wonderful example. She has a cat in her arms, which is really a nice feature. And we expect this between twelve and fourteen thousand dollars hopefully. We have a group of carvings that a doctor, a local doctor, brought us and his father-in-law Frank Simon of Louisville, Kentucky carved them. Uh, this was his projects after he retired in the 1930s. I think they're really, really uh, wonderful carvings. The quality and the stance of these carvings, I think they'll probably go keep on going after they leave here. I think they're collector grade. In particular, I think this little moon face guy is probably the best one in original polychrome paint surface. Super folk art object. Probably some of the best folk art we've sold. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing about this, it doesn't even look like it goes with the rest of them. But he's obviously a sophisticated but, carver. But he, um, he did carve it because it came right from his family. Uh, we're really happy about these. These are neat. Um, there's a great Sean Hut Circus in the showcase here. A lot of animals, a lot of clowns, um, good condition mostly. Uh, tollware, a French dome top box. Uh, this Highway Express truck is probably one of the best uh, press steel cars I've ever had. It's um, it's almost flawless condition. I, I nothing is flawless, but really nice. This is a Civil War era depiction of the futility of war as far as I'm concerned. The flag is up and everybody's cheering, but you have widows and babies uh, over the dead. Uh, a ruined plantation. It's by William Henry Mackin. And uh, there's very few works by him, but I think this is maybe his best work. We believe it to be a historically significant painting, and we have an estimate of twenty to twenty-five thousand on the object. Here we have lot four ninety-six. It's a Hutchinson foundry hooked rug with a verse on it. First a maid, and then a widow, married for a brief short span. I rest in weeds beneath a willow, nigh adamant to other men. Um, these were made by a foundry in Brooklyn, New York, and they're a rare example of hooked rugs. And I hope this brings between $1,000 and $2,000. Here on the wall, we're looking at a collection of game boards from the Pauling House. There's 30 examples, many of them in all original paint, some early 1900s examples, some later examples. But it's really nice to mass collection. Right here is a really nice polychrome game board with a spinner. And next to it is a game board with a horse and a dog. It's probably the best collection of game boards we've ever auctioned.